Welcome to Discovering. Tonight, the leaves are falling and the smallmouth bass are biting. And these fish are all so thick right now because they, they put the fall feed bag on, so they're all just little footballs. And with the gun deer season right around the corner, I visit hardcore outfitters in Iron Mountain to look at trail cameras. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. In mid-October, Brian Claremont sent me photos of how good the smallmouth bass fishing was on the Menominee and that I needed to make a trip down for a day of fishing with him and Jody Corich. By the time my schedule and Mother Nature cooperated, it is two weeks later and hopefully the smallie bite is still on. Typical UP fall weather has rolled in and the morning is damp and foggy. There's no snow yet, so we can be thankful for that. Let's get one, Jody. The fall colors here in the southwestern tip are at peak. In my neck of the woods in the northwest, the trees are bare. It's amazing what a difference 150 miles can make. Yeah, it won't be long and our colors are all gonna leave. I think well, you have colors, so we, have, we don't have any. A little bit, yeah, I know up north a little bit further along. We're a little bit warmer here because of the bay. So we actually just probably peaked, what about? Yeah, this week probably. Sit. They're piled here. Yeah, they're piled here, Joe. And these fish are all so thick right now because they, they put the fall feed bag on, so they're all just little footballs. And inch per inch, pound for pound, there ain't a better, better fish than smallies, I think. They, they are fun to catch. The fishing started off pretty slow. You know, sometimes the bike can die, but never just completely croak out. I, that's hard to believe because I've been doing 30 plus fish every time I've been out here, so I don't know. And since we're being picky, I gotta be picky. I call this bass candy, and they're kind of pricey. They're hard to hang on to. And this is a Kaylee hook. What I do is I go underneath the lip like that, and there's a little hard spot right in the center where my point, pointer finger is, and I stick it through there and pop it through like that. And then these are kind of expensive, so I just take a little piece of rubber, piece of plastic, and cut them up in pieces. And I put it on after the sucker's on there like that. And when you cast that, that hole gets bigger and that, that piece of rubber will hold that sucker on there longer. Tip of the day. Hey, Jody, catch a fish. So, oh yeah, that's a fish. See, I'm gonna, cause been, we haven't had many bites, so I'm gonna open up the spool and just let them run. Cause you always wanna hit them when they're going away from you. And he's coming right up towards me. And it should be a good fish. If I can stick him. He's still sitting there. He's not, I like to get him to move. But he's just sitting there. Watch my rod tip. I'll get, I'll get it to bounce to show you there's a fish there. See? He's chewing on it. See him chewing on it? I'm gonna hit him. There we go. Hooked up. Oh, little guy. That was all exciting for a little guy, Jody. <laughs> this, hopefully this is the littlest one we catch today, which really isn't a real bad fish, but we've been catching some tanks. It's a little 15 incher. You know, nice the eyes are on, nice red, nice clean fish. So I was getting worried for a little bit, but we'll keep after it. We'll get some more. We'll be back.
got to get a couple bites to see what the fish are doing. Sometimes they'll just come up. Now, I'll show you here after I hook this, this bait on here. Um, because the water's starting to cool off. So a lot of times some fish will come up and they'll just grab the bait like this and they just sit there. So they got it like that. So what you want to do is when you know they're biting like that and you see how I had my rod, I want to feel them bouncing and all of a sudden you'll feel it and what they'll do is they'll turn and they'll swallow. So then when the fish is going away from you and when you set the hook and you pull these, these Kaylee hooks, they always get them in the corner of the mouth most of the time. So when you pull it gets to the corner of the mouth. So, but sometimes some fish will come up and it's gone, you know? So you got to kind of read how, the, how they're biting it. Brian said fishing has been best from 11 to 2. Sure enough, we didn't get our next bass until 10.55. You drop it? No. He really dropped it and picked it up. Oh! Oh! Swing, bat, bat, oh, swing. Oh, it came back and grabbed came it. Came back and grabbed yeah, it. There we go. Back. That's a nice Good one. one? Yep. Oh, yeah, there's a nice thing. Oh, time. Yeah. That's there we go. There we go. That's what we're after. Yep. That's a better fish. Double header. Do we? We would have. Oh. I missed. You missed? I swung and missed. You the net? Yeah, I don't want to. There you go. It's a nice little smallie. They're not fast and furious today, but they're here. I know they're here, so it's a matter of just picking away. And now uh, we started a little bit earlier than I've been starting here lately. But you can see how that fish has got it down in his throat if you take the pliers and you go in through the gill here like this and you grab hold of the hook and you choke up on it and you give it a little twist and you see that it popped right out if i can get a hold of it to get it out there we go no blood didn't hurt that fish at all i love them smallies mm. oh little guy little guy flipper yeah we'll flip. flipper there we go Coming towards me. He's running right towards me. I'm reeling and he's coming. Oh, I'm gonna turn. Come on, let's see if we can get him to turn. Come on, turn. Well, oh, either I'm gonna get him or he's gonna get my bait. I think I got him. Ooh. Ooh. Smallies, he's on the other side now. Oh, um, I don't know, he's at the other side of the boat now. He's everywhere but where the camera's going. <laughs> Oh, that is a hog. Oh, he's hooked right in that tip of the mouth, too. Tip of the lip. There we go. Whew. That's a good one. We'll take that, eh? We've been catching a lot of these. It's just been a little rougher this morning, but like I said, we started a little earlier than we've been starting. But yeah, inch for inch, pound for pound, these smallies are so much fun. They are just, and in the fall here, they're pretty easy to catch. Today, we've just been a little slow, but it's starting to pick up. All right, let's get rid of this one. No, oh, I love them. I'm gonna say goodbye. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, that's a oh. I love this. Giant smallies in the fall. Oh, that is a tank, Jody. Look at that fish. That is a tank. That's all a 20. Woo hoo. <laughs> That's what we came for right there. Big fall smallmouth, Menominee River. Gotta love it. For the rest of this afternoon, it's the Jody Corrett Show. Hopefully you don't drop it. He dropped it. Grabbed it right here and then dropped it. Drop it. 
Ooh, that's another good one. Oh, that's another tank. Nice job. Look at how fat he is. Look at the belly on him. Fatten up for the winter. We'll let you go and Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's another thing. It's a live sucker. As soon as you put a live sucker on, you get bit. That's yeah. what I said. Yep. I'm going to throw it up that way. You're going to net your own fish this time, Kirk. <laughs> right. I can do that. I need to do that. Congrats, Ooh, nice yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's spit it out again. <laughs> it's another 19, 19 and a half, I'd say. Jody's on fire. Yeah. You better catch a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> Idle threats. Idle threat. <laughs> <laughs> better watch my mouth. Quietly catching some fish back there. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> you catch her from the dock? <laughs> oh, Fall smally. Just gorgeous fish. Mm. Fish number 13. Lucky 13. Uh oh. Yes, we cannot quit at 13. We are not allowed to. If anything, we'll have to drop you off at the dock and wave goodbye as you pull away. And even if it's snowing or hailing or whatever, Jody and I are coming back out here. We do not quit on 13. We're not superstitious or nothing, no. Yay! Oh yeah, it's a tank. I just had a little low, that's all. Oh, and look at Jody, I haven't been netting his fish, but he's gonna net mine, though. Thank you, Jody Korch. That was a long dry spell. Fall fishing's beautiful out here. Pretty soon we'll have big heavy jackets on and be looking through a hole. I'm not looking forward to that. So let's let this girl go. Are you ready, baby? There she goes. Oh. All right, what you got on there, Brian? I don't think it's that big. But you don't think he's little? No. He's uh, Thank you. playing around. That's okay, because that's another fish. But I want to get him back in a drink so I can catch another one for the camera because Kristen's got to go over here soon. Um, where those leaves are, Jody? Yep. That's a little current break. Them fish are sitting right in there because that's okay. where I threw it and I got one right away. Okay. Because that's where all the bait and stuff is ending up too. The sucker's like, oh no. Don't throw me back in there. Somebody's going to eat me. Oh, where's oh, we're one? We're going to finish with a double, ain't oh. we? Here, here goes I got it. Yeah. We're doubled up. <laughs> We're doubled up. Oh, Double good header. One. Oh, good one. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. We'll do it like this. One. We'll finish the day like this. Two. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even pick the egg thing up. <laughs> Look at that, hey Kristen? Isn't that a beautiful thing? Double. What a great day. Yeah, <laughs> that's my kind of day. Good times, this is what this is about, is making memories. And uh, it's funny, I said I want to finish with a double. 
And, and look at how we finished today. A minute later, wham, I got one, wham, I got one. Perfect. So, and it was a little slower today's start, but yep. it picked up. And yep. This fall bass, but it's fantastic. Oh, eh? you can't People, beat it. It's beautiful out here. Yep. Nice smallies, inch for inch, pound for pound. You better fight and fish, eh, No, no, no. They're the best. All right. What a great day. Thanks for coming, Kristen. Yep. With the gun deer season right around the corner, I decided I needed a new trail camera to see what is happening out in my woods while I run around the UP filming, fishing, and waterfowl hunting, and everything else. So I stopped in Hardcore Outfitters in Iron Mountain and talked to Phil. Like everything else, the technology on trail cameras keeps getting better, and it's hard to keep up on what's the latest and greatest, without costing an arm and a leg. There's lots of different uh, styles of trail cameras out there nowadays. Um, we have everything from your basic, you just put your SD card in there, throw it out in the woods and go check it whenever you want. You can leave it out there for a day, a week, whatever. Take another card with you, switch it out, and then you'll have to go back to your computer and check the photos on there. Like this browning here, it'll do up to about 80 feet at night. It's about 120 bucks. It'll take a picture every 3.3 seconds and it'll capture up to 15,000 images on six AA batteries. Pretty good starter camera for the money. Um, we sell a lot of these. They're a great camera for a great price. Going from there, we kind of jump into the cell cameras, which is starting to become a pretty popular thing. We have some culverts here that uh, have 0 0.03 second trigger speed. So every 0.3 seconds, you're taking a picture of a deer as it walks through or whatever it's coming through at that time. Um, the culverts are great. We have a good selection of the Tacticams as well and then all the accessories that go along with them. Um, the solar panels, the lithium cartridge batteries, and then the cameras itself. So we have two different styles of the Tacticams, the 2.0 and the X-Pro. The real difference, the X-Pro has like a black flash so the deer cannot actually see that. So that's starting to become pretty popular. Um, it also has GPS tracking, so wherever that camera is out in the woods, you can pull up the app on your phone and it'll actually show you exactly down to the tree that it is on. Um, it's pretty impressive. So to sign into the app, all you do is you're going to hit the reveal, the reveal app, and then right away your photos are going to come up. Um, it's pretty simple. All your photos are here. I got different cameras that are named different things. So when you click on it, it'll also give you the temperature, the wind, the pressure, the sun, and the moon phase, what time the photo was taken at, and all that stuff. It's pretty simple to use. Um, you can go back here to your cameras. If you have multiple cameras, it'll show it here, along with the battery life, the signal of the camera, the percent that your SD card's at, and when the last time it was updated. So the Tacticam's update um, once every 12 hours, which is pretty nice to know that your camera's updated and working good. So I have mine set, as it takes a picture, it sends to my phone instantly. You can have it set if you want to just do it in the afternoon, just in the morning. Um, you can turn the notifications off on your phone so it's not always buzzing at you that, hey, you're getting a photo and you're wondering what's going on at the deer blind. You know, with the cell cams, there is monthly subscriptions. The Tacticam starts at about five bucks a month for I think right around two, 300 photos. And you can up it to like anywhere from $13 to $20 a month. If you do the $20 a month one, you're getting video and HD photos as well, um, unlimited. If you start bundling cameras, you do get a little bit of a break, um, a couple bucks off each camera. And you're going to need an SD card with either type. So SD cards, the bigger the better. So the bigger the size on the SD card, the more photos that you'll be able to hold. Uh, cellular cameras are a little bit more picky on which SD cards you use. But as for like just the, the non-cellular ones, you can use basically any size. Like I said, a bigger, a bigger size is a little bit better so you can get more photos on there. And batteries not included. The best to use is probably the lithium batteries. Cameras will do really good until it gets cold out. And then when it gets cold out, and then the more photos that they're taking, the batteries really seem to go down quick. Cell cameras and some of the regular cameras, you can get the option for a solar panel, which is a great option. They're right about 60 bucks. So they kind of pay for themselves really by the time you buy a good set of lithium batteries. And that'll keep the camera going as long as it's got good sunlight, it'll keep it going all year. My trail camera is ready to go. And hopefully I'll have a big buck story to share when I go to big buck night at Hardcore Outfitters on the 18th. Yeah, big buck night, November 18th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Can bring your harvest in and um, 
Discovering will be here to film it and the Michigan DNR will be here to age deer and we'll have a scale out there. We can weigh the deer and tell stories and there'll be some prizes and we'll have food and beverages. It'll be a good time. I hope to see you there. That's all for tonight and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.